If you're looking to get an easy way of being able to style any website and take it beyond what any theme offers you, CSS Hero is a fantastic tool for doing just that. And with the advent of version 4 being released, we have a ton of new features alongside a reworked interface. In this video, I'm going to show you just some of those key features and go through some of the advancements we've seen in this new version. So first of all, full disclosure, this video has been sponsored by CSS Hero. So if you're new to CSS Hero, you might be wondering what it is. It's a great way of being able to visually style and edit any of the CSS on your entire website. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of theme you're using, even if you're using something as basic as the Hello theme, which has no real styling whatsoever, this is going to give you the power to visually get in and start editing, configuring, and tweaking everything the way you want. Even if you use something like Visual Page Builders, you can still get in and go beyond what they can offer you just using this simple tool. In this video, I'm just going to show you some of the basics and some of the new things that have come along just so you can get a head start on how to start using this and start customizing any WordPress theme to make sure it looks exactly as you want. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. So I've gone ahead and jumped over to the dashboard of WordPress and as you can see, I've got a page created. I'm just using Gutenberg as the editor and we're using the hello theme which is basically completely blank. So this is what we're looking at in the dashboard of WordPress. When we take a look at the actual page itself, you can see it's completely and utterly unstyled. In this video, I'm just going to show you some of the ways we can start to style this out. So let's just jump back over into the dashboard. So how do we actually access CSS Hero? Well, once you install the plugin, you're going to get a new option at the top of your screen and you can click on there to open up the CSS Hero editor. That'll take a second or so to load. And one of the most important things that we've got with this new version 4 is a much faster interface to work with. The overall process of styling, editing and working inside CSS Hero has now become incredibly quick due to some great under the hood changes and a complete reworking of the actual code which means styling your sites is going to be much quicker and much easier. Okay, so this is the interface. As you can see, it's a nice, simple, clean interface, very reminiscent of working with the customizer in WordPress. So if you are used to working with the customizer, you're going to find your way around this. It feels quite intuitive. So let's take a look at the interface first of all and see what we have available. At the top, we've got this section that allows us to switch between CSS, Hero and the Inspector. We can also detach the editor if we want to. So if we're working on a screen and we want to make sure we get maximum real estate, we can click detach that and we can then position that wherever we want inside our work environment. If we want to redock it, we can just reattach the editor there. Next up, we have media queries, and this allows us to switch between the various different views that we want and it allows us to actually go through and style everything while making sure that it looks great on tablets, on mobile devices, landscape, portrait and so on. We then have the switch between the edit mode and the navigate mode. Now, what this allows us to do is in the edit mode, we can start editing any of the elements. And you can see once we click, we've got all the options on the left hand side, much the same as you would inside the customizer. But if we want to go through and navigate to a different page, we can simply switch this over to navigate mode. And then we can go through and we can navigate through any of the links that we have on a particular page that we're viewing. Very quick and easy to switch between the two of those and start changing out the page that we want to work with. We've then got undo and redo. We've also got keyboard shortcuts for these. We then have the option to go through and see our history. We have a range of other tools then, things like checkpoints. So if we want to, we can save checkpoints and load checkpoints. So we might be wanting to make some changes. Then we want to save that, try some other things. If we don't like it, we want a quick way of switching back. That's how we could load in a previously saved checkpoint. We've then got the option for projects. We've got the media query manager at the selector tree and the project variables. So depending on how complex you want to get with your styling, you've got a ton of options available to you in there. The selector tree is very useful because it allows you to see all the different elements and choose them directly inside a typical CSS or HTML tree. You've then got the option for tools. So we can see we've got view as unlogged. We've got style login page. So you want to go in and customize the style of the login page. And we can also go through and reset all of the theme edits that we've done using CSS Hero. Finally, we've got the quit option, which allows us to quit out of CSS Hero and takes us back to the actual page view editing. If we come over to the left hand side, now we've got an element selected. You can see we've got a lot of controls over there. We've also got the code editor underneath, so we can see exactly what code we're going to be editing, what we've got selected. We can come down, you can see we can increase or decrease the font size. We can get in and hand code things if we want to. We can save and cancel. 
we can also see the tree that we're currently working with so you can see this is showing us the entire hierarchy of the selected element so if i select something like this title at the top you can see once we select that this will show exactly what we're looking at. If we come down to the image, you can see that'll show us exactly what we're looking at there and it'll update in real time so we can make sure that we've got the right element selected. If we want to step back through that, you can see we can simply click back through and in the code editor on the left-hand side, you can see that updates and also it means that now we can edit anything we want based upon this tree at the bottom. So it's a very quick and easy way of working. We've also got the option then when we come over and mouse over anything, you can see we've got this selector which allows us to do a couple of things. It allows us to see exactly what element we've got selected. It'll show us the number of edits we may have made and also it allows us to go into the quick resize mode which allows us to quickly and easily add padding and margins to our design or our particular element. It's a very easy way of working. So that's the interface in its basic format. Let's get in and start making some changes and see how easy it is to get in and start making edits to the CSS. I'm also going to take you through some of the things that this is allowing us to do with the latest version, version 4 of CSS Hero. Now one of the nice things with this reworked interface of CSS Hero is that it gives us the ability to customize the interface and our workflow to make sure that it works exactly how we want it to. So if you're working with a nice high resolution monitor, you could easily adjust this. And if you work on a lower resolution, smaller screen like we're viewing at the moment, we can close things down, resize things and so on. So just close down the CSS selectors on the right hand side to give us a bit more space. And if we want to, if we come over to the left hand panel and we mouse over, you can see we get a little resize handle will pop out and we can now easily resize this to make sure we can see exactly what we want and give us as much real estate as we need. So let's kick things off by adjusting the margins and the padding on this page so we can see how easy it is to start setting up and styling everything. So at the moment we've got a full width layout, looks terrible. How do we go about changing things like that? Well, we can come over and start using the properties on the left hand side. First thing you want to do is make sure we select the right element. So we're going to choose the HTML body. So we've got the body of this entire layout. We can then come in and start editing anything we want in there. So we've got things like the positioning. So you can see we can set the position, the top, bottom, right, and so on. We come back out of there and we can come into measures. You can see we've got max width, min width, and so on. So let's set the width of our document. We're going to say we want this width to be a certain size. So let's just say we want the width to be 1140 pixels. And we can say we want the max width to be 1140. Put the px at the end obviously if you want to use other values like percentages and so on you can do that you just need to tag that at the end of the actual reference that you're working with the actual style that you're working with and you see once we do that if we look underneath the code editor you can see it shows exactly what we're doing in there so it's telling us how we've set this up everything is looking the way we want we come back out of this now and we say let's put some padding in there we can come in and we can say let's go to spacings and we'll say we want to add some padding now we've got things like we can do padding on all four sides or we can set individual padding we can also do the same thing then with margins. We can set top, bottom, left, right margins and so on. So let's just add a little bit of padding to this. And again, making sure that we've got the right element selected. So we set 25 pixels all the way around the edge. And you can see now we set those values. It's showing us an outline telling us that we've got padding applied. Now padding is in blue and margins are in green. So you make sure that you can see exactly what you're doing with this nice visual representation of exactly what's going on. Okay, so we set those basics, but everything is still over to the left hand side. It's not centralized. So how do we do that? Well, we can come in and set another parameter. Now we can use CSS Hero to be a visual editor. If you're accustomed to working with CSS and you find it faster to just physically go in and set the elements that you want, the definitions that you want, you can do that as well. All you need to do, jump up to the inspector, again, using the hierarchy tree that we've got here. So making sure that HTML body is selected. You can see now all of our CSS is shown in the inspector, highlighting exactly which definition is currently selected. All I need to do is come in and I can go down to there and I can say margin left and we'll set that to auto. And we can do, oh, put the right thing, and we can do margin right auto as well. And you can see once we do that, it now centers all our content. We can do this in either way we want. So We've got the options to go in and do it manually, or we can go in and use the visual editor to do it. So it's very easy to do. Now, you also see that it's giving me this little red check mark here, this little red box around line 13, telling us that we've got something wrong. So let's take that back. We also see that we've got this incorrect. So once we put that right semicolon in there, you can see it now tells us that, okay, everything is looking good now. So that little highlight is saying from this point on, there's an error somewhere. You can look through, find out where the error is, correct it, and it'll tell you then, once that red check mark goes, 
you know everything is back to normal. So coding inside CSS Hero is also incredibly easy to do. Okay, so we've done those kinds of things. We've seen how we can use the panel on the left-hand side to set things. We've also seen how we can use the inspector to hand code things. But how can we do other things? Can we visually edit things on the page? Well, we can. First, let's switch back over to the normal editor. So we'll jump back over to CSS Hero. We'll select the area that we want. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use these little symbols on the selectors to make some edits. So we come down, you see HTML body P. If we click on this little section, this little icon, you can see we now switch into a different mode. Now, this is the inline spacing mode, and this allows us to visually change the padding and the margins of any selected element. So now all we need to do is grab the element that we want. So you can see if we drag this down now, we start increasing the actual margin. So as you can see, we've now set that to 83 pixels. We can edit anything we want on here now. So if we want to, we can grab the inside and start adding padding in there. If we want to put negative margins in, we can do that as well. So you can see we can easily drag that out, get negative margins in there and start to style everything the way that we want to get our own fully customized designs. But the nice way with this is it's fully visual and we can make any edits. If you want to come back into the actual panel itself, you can make fine tune edits in there as well. It's very quick, very intuitive and a very visual way of working. OK, so we can see how easy that is to do on there. Let's just use the undo function now to take us back through to before we actually made edits to that. So there we go. Now, obviously, we're not limited to only working with text. We can work with any element on the page itself. So we select the image. You can see we can do exactly the same on there. So we could quickly come in, start adding padding, margins, whatever we want to get this to look exactly the way that we want. And one of the other new tools that we have is the ability to start using transforms and filters. So if you want to get creative with the way that things are looking, you can do that with those tools. So again, let's just make sure we've got this image selected. So we're going to choose that image. And we take a look on the left-hand side. First of all, we've got transforms. And if we click to open that up, we've got four different options. We've got scale, translate, rotate, and skew. And you can see we've got a little visual representation of exactly what we're working with. We've also changed the position of the transform origin if we want to. So we can adjust that if we're doing things like scale. So we can say exactly where it scales from, where it rotates, where it skews from, and so on. So that's pretty cool. And then what we can do is we can easily just use this little icon, this little graphic, and you can see we can increase the size, decrease the size, whatever we want. We get a little numeric representation of exactly what we're doing. So we want to put this to exactly 0.8. We could set that to 0.8, and you can see that now adjust accordingly. We can use these in conjunction with each other. So if we want to also go into translate, you can see we can easily do that. We can drag this around and position it however we want. Like I say, we can adjust the actual point that we're working with. So you can see we can adjust the position of it based on that. Again, let's just undo that, put it back to its default value. Rotate, as you would expect, allows us to rotate this. And if we adjust that rotation point, you can see it'll rotate around that particular point. And finally, we have the skew option. And again, we've got the transform origin, so we can set the point of origin. And then we can adjust the skew however we want. So you can get really creative by using the transform options. Let's undo this a second, take it back to where it was. And now let's take a look at the filters option. So we come into the filter section. You can see we've got all the normal filters you'd expect to see. So we can adjust things like the color on it. You set it to sepia, blur, brightness, contrast, and so on. So again, all we need to do is choose the filter that we want. Make sure we've got the element that we want to work with. So we'll just choose this image. And you can see as we adjust this, we now start to apply this sepia tint to it. If you want to blur it, we can blur it. So you can stack these on top of each other, whatever you want. You can invert if you want to. You can set the grayscale. So you can adjust these to your heart's content. And as you can see, all the CSS has been automatically written out for you. Now, obviously, one caveat with this is it's only modern browsers that are going to support this kind of thing. So if you're using legacy browsers, you won't see this effect. So just bear that in mind if you decide to use it. So that's how easy it is to start using transforms and filters inside CSS Hero, a quick, easy, and visual way of changing and styling things. So another key new feature in CSS Hero version 4 is RFS, or Responsive Font Size Support. And what this basically means is, as your viewport changes in size, then your font will change size accordingly. So to start working with RFS is very easy inside CSS Hero. All we need to do is select a text element. In this example, we're going to use the heading. We're going to come over to the Typography tab on the left-hand side. And underneath the font size, you can see we've got a little button that says RFS. If we mouse over that, it'll tell you exactly what that's going to do. So we're going to click to activate that, and you can see that immediately upsizes the heading to a size, in this example, of 80 pixels. So what we can do is we can adjust that if we want to, set that to whatever we want, and that's going to be our base starting point. So let's just put that back to around about 80 
set that there we go so now we've got that activated if we change to a different size you'll see once we click the font size now reduces down we click to go to a smaller screen you can see it reduces down again if we grab the handle on the right hand side so we manually adjust this you'll see as we do that that font size adjusts so it's very quick and easy to implement this into your design which also leads me on to the media query browser as you can see we can choose any of these media queries across the top but if we're not having what we want covered in there specific size we can use this grab handle on the right hand side and you can see it'll give us a little ruler at the bottom and also shows us the different media query breakpoints as a little popover in the bottom section so we can quickly and easily adjust this to get exactly what we want and test it on various different breakpoints if we want to add our own in we can also do that so CSS Hero is giving you a ton of functionality, including a lot of advanced features, all done through CSS. So that pretty much wraps up my overview of the new features in version 4 of CSS Hero. I think the interface updates, the speed increases, and some of these new features are a real great addition to what was already a fantastic plugin. As always, all the applicable links for this are in the description below, so if you'd like to check out CSS Hero, you can find more information there. Full disclosure, they are affiliate links, so if you click and you purchase, it does give a small percentage back to the channel, but it doesn't cost you any more money, and it helps support what we do around you. If you'd like to learn more about WordPress and developing your websites in general, consider clicking on these videos right now and take a look at some more details. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.